Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We are viewing the Eschatology Roundtable. Praise God. I'm your host, Apostle Stephen G. Conley, and I am here today, amen, with my very special guest, Apostle J.R. Armstrong, and we are just so happy to uh, be with you here today, and we pray that, praise God, things are well with you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is a great day, praise God, and as always, we invite you to find a friend, family member, or someone, and invite them to tune in to the Eschatology Roundtable, and we're right here at the Shepherd's Fold Ministries located in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This broadcast is sponsored by the Shepherd Shofar International Harvester Ministries, and we are here to broadcast the kingdom of God to you. My brother, amen, is here. I'm so blessed to have him here today. This is iron right here if you've ever met him. This is iron right here. Now, I don't know that he's sharpening any iron today. I think he's sharpening wood, but... Uh, he's he's file he's filing copper, is what he's doing. But uh, we've got uh, a blessed man of God with us today to break bread with us. So, uh, brother, just tell us a little bit about what God is doing in your life, and uh, we're going to get this train train moving. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Been that long. For ever since he ascended, we've been here a long time. Oh, my. It's a, it's a, it may seem like a long time for us, yeah. but the word says a thousand years is as a day for the Lord. Okay. You see? So for him, it's probably only been two days. We're all in the end time. All right. <laughs> Amen. Okay. We're in the church age. It's the end time. Okay. Yeah. And so, I, like I said, I just praise God that, I'm, that I have the opportunity to be here with you today. Uh, any opportunity that God, a door of God opens for us to sit down, break bread, and share his word is an honor. It's an honor to him. And so we, we honor him today, and I, I just pray that, 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 that his, his revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, is revealed through this study and this discussion. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, and it's a blessing to have you here. So again, get your Bibles. Amen. Sit around your table, and let's break bread today. Now, the stage is being set. The stage is set all over the world. Uh, here's how I like to look at end times. First of all, uh, God revealed it to me this way. As far as the world is concerned, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We got, if I can use this uh, this kind of analogy. It may not be the best way to think of it, but for those of you who don't think globally, it's like two men playing chess. Mm. Okay. God is the master chess player. Satan don't play chess as well, but he wants to learn how to play the game. And they play in chess. This may be a poor way of doing it. Some people may be offended by this thought, but indulge me. They play in chess. But the chess game is bigger than just playing with people. Although people are involved. You know, we as humans, we, we tend to think that God's only concern is about Itsy bitsy me. Mm -hmm. 
And yet he is so big and so high and so loving that God so loved the world that he cares about itsy bitsy me. But there's a bigger picture mm. also. Come on now, come on, yes. That they move in big pieces, which means nations and cultures. So God is concerned about Israel. Let's, let's use Israel as his home, where Christ is going to set up his earthly kingdom one day. Satan is doing all he can to move all of his pawns and his, his uh, bishops and his knights and get them in place to keep stuff going on so he can capture. But the strategies is a global strategy. It's taken thousands of years to play out. What happens to us as Christians, I think, is that we tend to think that God is only concerned about our rent, <laughs> our love life, whether we get our electric paid. Mm. And yet God, he cares about all of that. But he's God. Yes. So right now in the world, I believe, and what the eschatology roundtable wants to kind of focus on is something bigger than your rent. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about current events mm -hmm. as it relate to the end of the world and the end of time. That's why we have a clock there. Yes. Because it is this man's opinion that we're in the final seconds of history. My brother said that 2,000 years ago, it was 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago when Christ died. Grace has been over 2,000 years. I don't believe we have much time left in grace. That's why we're seeing the pieces being moved and shifting now. And yes, God's going to continue to provide for our rent, our electricity. But if he's a just God, somebody could say, why don't he care about the Ukrainians' rent and electricity and their groceries? They're being put out of doors right now. God does con is concerned, but things are shifting in the earth. Mm -hmm. And we're in the final hours when things are being set up now for Christ's return. What well, 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 can I say? Can I interject right Interject. Now? Um, I like the fact that you put it in the scenario of a chess game. And that many of us are, cons are thinking that God is it's only all about us. Um, but in, in the chess game, it's a larger picture. It's a global picture. And so in this game of chess, as the pieces are being moved around, just like in a game of chess, pretty soon you're going to see pieces being removed. Come on now. I like that. Pieces are going to be removed because they're going to be captured because in the game, there's a, there's a place of limitation where you can go no further and you must be removed. That's a good point. Because, because the, whole, the goal, the goal is to capture the king. That's the goal. Of all these pieces which represent nations and cultures and civilizations, and you, you, you can use them, but the goal is to capture the king. And the board is the world. And so pretty soon, like I said, if not al already, pieces have been removed yeah. from the global game. 
You know, we, we, we read about that in Daniel and Revelation, about the kingdom that came up, the, the, the beast with the, with the horns, and then one horn dissipated, another one came up. These are kingdoms yeah. that are rising up and being overtaken and now being removed from the board. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's why we as Christians and we as those who are the salt of the earth, we must come to understand that the church is put here to have the information. Well, the sons of Issachar. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes. Yeah, it's time for them to manifest, you know, to have some type of understanding, inspiration, revelation of the times that we live in because we are the children of the light. Mm -hmm. We are not of the night. We are not drunken. They that are drunken are drunken. They that are in the light walk in the light. In the light. Come on. They, they that are drunken are drunken in the night, the Bible says. Right. They that are in the light are sober. Mm -hmm. See, we, we are paying attention. Uh, my clock again is there. That's, this, that's a new revelation. And on the face of that clock, uh, as of Tuesday night, we were talking. Tuesday, we spent some time together. Tuesday and then Tuesday night about 1 a.m. I had this clock revelation. It was a gothic looking clock. Mm. So it just so happens that on Saturday, yet, uh, two days ago, someone had thrown this clock uh, away or they had put it over by the trash can here at the church. That, that's just how things work. Yeah, look at God. Yeah. Look at there, yeah. And uh, I had recognized the clock, but what happened that, that it, was, it was in the, the church somewhere and uh, I didn't know whether it was in my home or here in the church. And I went looking around because I knew I'd seen it somewhere. But it had been knocked off the wall and broken. I guess some of the kids playing at one of the rehearsals or something. So I took it. And I made it look just like in my vision. If you look at the clock, on the face of the clock, where the numbers are, in my vision was the word, the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And... That's what I saw at 1 a.m. And then I heard the Lord say, uh, uh, be not, don't be afraid, but believe. Don't be afraid, but believe. Don't be afraid, but believe. And so uh, when I began to ask him about that, uh, then he showed me in the vision, he showed me the earth, and he showed me the, the curtains were shifting. The curtains were shifting. It was just, the earth was full of curtains. It was in a warehouse, but he was showing me. I said, what is it? He says, the earth curtains are getting ready to shift. And so, he said, cultures were getting ready to shift. Nations were getting ready to shift. Families were getting ready to shift. Everything was getting ready to shift. And it was like being in a car wash. And like the old car wash with the uh, cloth on it that just lay on your window and wash it. But it was going this way. And you could go two feet. And it would go this way. You go two more feet and it would go this way. You go two more feet and it'd be like it was going this way. And it was just shifting. And it was just, it was just like being in a maze. And that's what people were faced with. And he says, it, it, the word was unsettling. It will be in the area of food. It will be in the area of gas. It'll be, of course, we're already seeing that. But it will be in every area. It's, the, the earth is, is getting ready to be shook. But before that, I saw heaven. And in heaven, heaven was just sitting there, stable. stable. Because we have come to the time of the revealing of who Christ is. We've come to the time of the snatching away, the catching away. We've come to the time just before the return of the Lord. I mean, we're within... Uh, uh, my brother said 2,000, and he said uh, uh, a day is with the Lord is a thousand years. Uh, he alluded to that, and and I didn't want to cut him off, but I did the math. If you do it on God's timetable, a thousand years is as one day. That means a person who's 60 years old is only about two days old. I did the math. You're only about two days old. No more than three days old. Two point something three days old. So when you get to thinking, oh, it's been a long time they've been talking about that. You're only a couple of days old. 
So you have no reason to be proud and think like you know so much when you're only two or three days old. Yes. See, God is eternal. He's called the ancient of days. He, he, he's outside of time. But we are actually come to the place, uh, I believe, it was 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus, and it's been 2,000 years from Jesus to now. That's 6,000 years, and of course no man knows the day of the hour, but 6,000 years, and we've got 1,000 years of uh, Christ sets up his kingdom. That's 7,000 years, and I believe those kind of numbers uh, puts us right at the return of the Lord, which could be any day now. Could be any month now. Could be any week now. Could be right now. But most people don't believe that Christ is returning. He's the Prince of Peace. What does that mean? He, he, he has to bring a universal peace, a world peace. Why would there be an Antichrist if we didn't need a certain kind of global peace? A lot of people believe in the Antichrist, but don't believe in the Prince of Peace. Why would you need an Antichrist? Why would you need this one world government uh, system? When COVID came out, people everywhere, this is, this is, this is like the mark of the beast. Well, why, would you, why would you even waste your time to believe in a mark of the beast and not believe in the Prince of Peace? Right. Because that says that you believe that there is a man of sin. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9 and 6. He's the Prince of Peace. To, to believe to believe that that this is a that anything is a mark of the beast. Come on, talk to me. Is to say that, I mean, you can't say that with and, and negate the source at the same time. Talk, tell me. You see, you can't. You just can't do that. I like what you said about the shifting of the of the curtains. You know, you put it in in the in the in the, in the uh, metaphor of, of of different things sh shaking in the world. And that's good. But I also saw dominions. I saw dimensions. Different dimensions. And things being obscured to us. Because the revelation of Christ is not revelations. Right. The S, it's just the revelation Rachel. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, of who he actually is. And what his mission is and what he came to do. It's really obscured to us. It's, it, it's beyond really our full understanding. We have a glimpse. The Bible says we, we look through a glass dimly. Yes, sir. You see, so we just see in part. And we're going to be surprised when we get in his presence and see the fullness. You know, a lot of people say, well, when I get to heaven, I've I, I got some conversation. I'm going to ask Jesus about this. But when you get there, you're going to know everything. You ain't going to have to ask nothing. Because mm -hmm. everything's going to be revealed. It's going to be clear. Be in the light as he's in the light. Man, man, man. Mm. man. I, I just love that. You know, and, and for the most part, we're going to understand. I talked to, to you about this earlier. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to understand his holiness. Yes, sir. See, we're going to come to understand that. You see? So everybody, everybody, so we're going, going to be holy then. We're going to be holy then. So we're going to be holy? Yeah. Explain holiness. This, this, wait a minute. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me ask a question here. Set this up for a question. And this is not a trick question. But we're going to be holy then. How, how does holiness work? I mean, well, like I said, we look through a glass dimly. <laughs> we only see holiness. in part. Explain holiness. Because Hol eschatology, and I, I don't feel holy. I'm, I'm just saying as a person, if I don't feel holy, or what is holy? Well, what does holiness feel like? My sister go to a holiness church. What does church. holiness feel like? Huh? What does holiness feel like? We don't know. Clean, ain't it? I don't know what holiness is. You don't do. You don't cuss no more. <laughs> Well, see, I believe, <laughs> brother over there laughing. You don't I believe, lie? I believe holiness is a lifestyle. Okay. I think it's a lifestyle. It's not a matter of, 
I don't do this no more. I don't do that no more. Or I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to do that. That's legalistic. Okay. Lifestyle. See, you don't, you don't need a law to tell you what's right. I'm going to push your button there, okay. Apostle Armstrong, because, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here, mm -hmm. because I go to a Baptist church. Okay. And we smoke and drink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but my sister go to a so-called holiness church, and they smoke and drink too. Okay. So which one of us is holy? Oh, 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 because, because they're called holiness? Well, I'm that, trying that to That don't make them holy. It's just, they're just a label that they have acquired. They so speak in tongues. So? They're just a label they have, like you, you said earlier, rubber stamped <laughs> themselves with. Well, holiness is about relationship with the Holy One. Okay. See? Okay. It's not about your works. Okay. What you do or don't do that you can wear as a badge of honor. Okay. It's about your relationship with him. Okay. And if when your relationship with him is in, it, 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 it's in a righteous place. Well, I'm going to ask the question here. Okay. Because this is a real, real show. Okay. Can I smoke reefer, drink, sleep around, and all that, and be holy? I just want to know because I, I got to person that I'm seeing. And be holy. No, you can't. Just but I got a relationship you, with him. Do you? What kind of relationship? Well, he understands my heart. Oh, yes. But do you understand his? Okay, that's why I need you to help me. I'm <laughs> but just do trying, you understand his heart? I, I'm just trying see, to... Trying see, to what you understand is that he forgives. Oh. But what you don't understand is that he don't desire to continue to forgive you for the same thing over and over again. Okay. Now, I've heard that many times. Is there a cutoff now, point? my heart. Huh? Is there a cutoff point? Is there a cutoff point for an individual? If I mean, I, do I have a date that I got to stop? We it? all have, have a moed. What's that? In the Hebrew, it's called a moed. It's, it's an appointed time. Is there a way to know it? Uh, no. Because I'm trying to break it off, all these mm -hmm. habits. Trying to stop that, seeing people, them things I know I shouldn't go do. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have been doing. I know that. But, and then I hear the preacher say, you saying the Lord's returning soon. You know, and they can't judge me either because some of them ain't living. I'm just trying to be honest here. Do I, do, is there an etic or whatever, E-T-I-A, estimated time of arrival mm -hmm. when he coming. Well, the Bible tells us that no man knows the day or the hour, but he does tell us the season. Okay. See? And to know that is to know his word. And to know his word is to get to know him. Is it wrong to, to, to do these things? That's my question because now we're talking... It's to God. live is like it, you want? To, is it wrong? Is it really wrong? And still <coughs> receive the promise? Still is it receive wrong? The promises? I just want to know, is it wrong? To, and to live like you want and still receive the promises? Yes, sir. Um, Be honest with me. Is it wrong for me to do some of these things? Explain, explain to me if I got, if I got, I'm married and I got somebody I'm, well, I'm Wrong in who I sight. Huh? Wrong in who I sight. In the church. In the church I cite, in some churches it would be wrong. Maybe not in all churches. Well, it ain't wrong in my church because okay. my pastor ain't said nothing. So That's I'm what I'm saying. Maybe in some churches it's wrong, in some churches it's not. But all, all, church has no heaven or hell to put you in. So it's okay. No, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm saying you, 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 you're looking for the wrong person to validate your actions. Some churches is, is, is okay. Some churches is not. Well, should so 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 the person you should the, the 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 source you should be looking at for right or wrong is God. But if 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 my deacon and preacher and nobody in the church they can't judge me because some of them doing the same thing. I ain't thing. gonna tell you who, but some of them 
So if they don't tell me, I must be all right. Not necessarily. That's not necessarily true. Consider the source. Consider the source of who's, who's, who's affirming your actions. Okay. <laughs> Consider the source. If someone, if someone came to me and said, oh, did, you, did you know Pastor Conley with this, that, and the other? And I'm, and I'm going to look at them and, and try. First, I'm going to ask, why are they bringing this information to me? And then I'm going to consider the source. So the thing, what I'm saying is, just because it's, just because it's heard, just because it's done, just because people accept it, doesn't make it holy. Doesn't make it right in the eyes of God. Because he, he wants us to be holy as he is holy. But everybody doing something. Everybody's not. See, that, 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 that's a cliche. That's a cliche to justify your own actions. You're the first person I heard say it like that. <laughs> I thought everybody was doing something. No. Everybody ain't doing Everybody's so doing something? Well, I mean, everybody's mean? doing something. <laughs> everybody's seeing it. Is that what you're saying? Well, I thought everybody was doing something. No. You're the first person I heard say that. <laughs> say what? Answer back like that. I thought everybody was doing something. No. 